Up next is Marco Sambros. He drives the number nine Stanley Ford for Richard Petty Motorsports. And Marco's uh, certainly coming to a venue that you have won multiple times. Uh, I know you tested it up here uh, earlier this season. You just talk about your, uh, your frame of mind and your outlook here this weekend at Watkins Glen International. Yeah, I think uh, I'm the same as AJ. You know, we, we, we both know that we've got a, a chance to win this race to lock us in the chase. And that's a big thing for, uh, for our team and, and it would really make our year. So it's an important weekend, no doubt. you just got to try to downplay that as best you can coming in. And, uh, you know, we're excited. We had a good test up here last week and felt like uh, the car was repeating competitor last year and we had a fast car last year too. So fingers crossed it's, um, you know, it comes off the truck here pretty quick and, and we can just get back down to business and, um, and work on starting in the front. Take questions. We'll start with Lee and then Alan. Lee and then Alan. SpencerMotorsport.com. How are you? Good. Super. Wanted to ask you, um, you already have one driver in the chase and, mm -hmm. you know, potentially two. What do you look at as your chase strategy? Because you have to think that if you get through that first segment, um, you know, the first three races, you're really intent on, you know, AJ was in here. He doesn't think that they're ready to go. You know, they're not a chase caliber. You know, if they get, you know, anything mm -hmm. can happen. Mm -hmm. But once you get past that first, then how do you look at it? And how, what does your testing schedule look like? Um, I have not even thought about once you make the chase because we're not in. So it's really, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but it's just something that I don't even think about. Um, I've got to get in. So, you know, that's my focus. And this weekend has been a big push from RPM to give the nine chance, give the nine car a chance to make it in. And, uh, you know, if we do, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with those first three races as best we can. Uh, I know the 43 is already thinking about how they're going to go about it. They've got some testing plan. We've got one test day less, left as a company. They've got some other trucks that we can go to, which are similar to the trucks that we, we have in the chase uh, to give them, a, you know, the best opportunity. But, you know, if you can finish top 15 in the three, in the three races, you should transfer through. That's kind of the stats that I've heard. But uh, if you're relying on a 15th place finish, you're not going to last too long, are you? So I think you've got to go for, for wins and top 10s uh, straight away in the, in the chase and roll the dice. That's what I would do if I was going to make it. Go to Alan and then to Dustin and then to Jim. Uh, Alan Cavada, NASCAR.com. How do you downplay the importance of, of one weekend and one race? It seems like it might be easy to, you know, too much pressure. And if you're not fast right away, you know, the whole weekend stinks. Or how do you downplay it? Yeah, you just got to just do the best you can, right? I mean, um, I can't change anything but how I drive the race car, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And we had a good practice in the nationwide car this morning. That was, you know, good to get the rust off. And uh, we'll go out here in a few minutes and check out the cup car and see what it's got. But y you know that it's not going to be easy. You know that... Uh, there's going to be 10, 12 guys out there that have got a serious shot to win the race. And, you know, you just know going in that it's not going to be a cakewalk. It's just going to have to be a, you know, a, a big grind to get the victory. I've been here uh, in victory lane lucky. I've been here deserving it. And I've lost races deserving to win as well. So, you know, it's um, uh, like AJ said, you know, it, it, you can only do what you can out there behind the wheel and you've got to let the... The racing gods work out whether it's your day or not. You know, um, there are there are factors here that come into play that are totally outside the team's control. And uh, some days you're on, some days you're not. We'll go to uh, Dustin, and then to Jim Utter, and then to Joe. Go uh, ahead. Dustin Long, uh, Two questions. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, AJ's mentioned strategy plays such a big factor. It can play a big factor in this race. How involved are you in that, or are you just, you know, let me put the foot down and you go figure it out how, because, because of your success here? How, how involved are you? How, how, do you? how do you play into that? And second question is, uh, have you decided what you're going to be doing uh, next season? Uh, absolutely haven't, uh, haven't even thought about that. We've got a big week uh, this week trying to make the chase for the nine team, and that's really all we're really focused on. Um, you know, how do you keep your emotions in check, and, um, and what do you do? Well, you, you just... For me anyway, I, I drive as fast as I can, uh, every single lap from the start of practice to the end of the race, and, um, and, and I let it work it out from there. You've got to be smart, and uh, you know, that's what AJ was kind of uh, pointing towards his race to Sonoma. He had a great car, and he was driving really well. You've got to play it smart, and that's what you've got to do here as well. You've got to put yourself in position at the end of the race to take advantage of restarts and, 
and uh, fuel mileage and all those other factors. So um, we got caught out last year by staying out too long and the yellow came out and that hurt us. And uh, you know we have to work on, um, on that strategy for this year. And um, I think we've made gains in our fuel mileage, which will help that. Go to Jim Utter and then to Joe. Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer. Um, if you were to win and get in the chase, uh, RPM has opportunity having both their drivers in the in the chase. What would that mean for the organization itself? And in particular, I know it's difficult to look ahead, but certainly that would be a benefit if you were had a teammate with you in the chase. Yeah, again, I, I had to be rude, but I'm not in the chase yet, so you know, I just I just haven't thought about it. And uh, I mean, it's fairly straightforward that RPM would love to have both cars in the chase, and that's what we're going to try and do this weekend. We'll go to Joe, and then the young lady in the back. Go ahead, Joe. Yes, Marcus, Joe Jennings, motorsport.com. Looking ahead or thinking about scheduling, would you like to see a road race as part of the chase? I get asked that every year, and I, I think, they, yeah, I'd be happy if there were 36 uh, races that were road races, wouldn't I? <laughs> Just the way it goes down. So um, uh, NASCAR have got, um, you know, tradition in this series, and I'm not going to comment on what races should or shouldn't be in the chase. Go ahead, young lady. Good morning, Marcus. Marcus, um, this is Connie Kirk, examiner.com, and thanks for talking to us this morning. Uh, I had a question. How do your uh, your past wins here inform your strategy of, of racing the next time? Uh, well, you know what you need from the race car to get to victory lane. Uh, you have that inner confidence to know what you need to do to do it. Uh, but, you know, my past history is no guarantee of the future, and... and uh, that's the way I look at it, that each weekend is unique to itself and uh, this weekend in particular, already there are some different angles that we haven't had to deal with before, the new ride height rules and the new downforce rules, uh, fuel mileage, how that comes into play is going to be different with the speeds we're going to run compared to last year. So a lot of, lot of things that are subtly different already that we're going to have to factor in. So um, I don't take any any past history is any uh, any guarantee of success, that's for sure. But uh, you, d you do know what it takes to, to win, and that, that does give you a, a bit of confidence. Let's go to Woody Kane. Raise your hand, Woody. And then the gentleman in the back, back there in the corner. Kane at MRN. Marcus, I'm, I'm curious about your running the nationwide race. Uh, we ask a lot of times, what can you translate over from that race? But what can you learn that will help you on Sunday by running that race? Uh, well, it was just nice to get the cobwebs out of the way there this morning and get on the track early and, and get after it. So that's, that's good for the driver to get a few more laps on the track. Uh, there's not that much you can carry over. You know, they've got a different, uh, different set of rules. We carry the same tyre, so tyre pressure maybe. Um, you know, even the brakes are different on a nationwide car because you're just not going as fast, you don't need to slow it down as much. So I think that uh, there's very little you can cross over, it's just fun to have a second race here and um, I've won three nationwide races in a row um, and so I'm going to try and make it four. Let's go uh, back in the back, the gentleman back there. Raise your hand. Good morning, Dave Buchanan from uh, WGR Sports Radio out of Buffalo. Marcus, knowing your history here and uh, your prowess and your skill set, do you feel when you come into this weekend you kind of have a target on your back uh, in the Cup Garage? Uh, certainly, I get talked about more, and uh, people, you know, sort of want to know what I'm doing. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Okay, let's go to uh, Kyle right here. Kyle, and then Marty Smith. Uh, hey, Marcus. Kyle Magnet from Speedway Digest. Uh, you said last time you ran the Nationwide Series here was 2010. The car was, was definitely different at the time. And you have run this current Nationwide Series car, I think, with the win at Montreal in 2011. I mean, what, what are the biggest differences, it, like you said, ha have you noticed this morning going back out in practice from the last time you ran here and then today, if you've noticed any? Yeah, the, the terminal speed is lower in a Nationwide car, so <clears throat> that helps brakes. Uh, gives you more time to think about what you're doing. And uh, you, can, uh, you can be a little more aggressive because you can set the car up a little stiffer because it doesn't have to absorb all that horsepower and, and brake pressure. So for me, um, you know, it was fun. They fun cars to drive. Let's go to Marty Smith. Marty Smith, ESPN. Hey, bud, good morning. If this was asked, I'm sorry, it probably was. I've not been in here very much. But you're one of the best that's ever done it here in a stock car. There's no debating that. But as well, you came here to test. What is success for you this weekend? Is anything but a win acceptable for you? 
Uh, we've got to be careful because we're 17 in points. So, you know, if we get away with the top five and we, you know, get closer to, I think you've got to be about 13th in points to feel like you've got a shot to make the chase. Then, um, yeah, then we, you know, we could say that it's been a solid day, but really we've come here to try and win. Uh, but at the same time, winning is very, very difficult in this series. And so you have to be just proud of putting effort in. So for me, if I, you know, have a, a, a good day and drive the very best I can and, and can get out of here with a, you know, with the top five, you know, I'll take it as, as a decent day, but we've really come here to win. Yeah. Let's go to, was it Tyler? Is that your name? Tyler? Yes, sir. Tyler, Reed Spencer, and end with Stan. Uh, what, do you got, I, what do you got yours? So Tyler, Hi, Marcus, and Tyler, Stan. MRN. Piggybacking off of that, um, you've had a lot of success at Michigan too, um, past couple years, and you've had speed there. Um, is that another place you can kind of circle and say we can get, um, have some success there going there next week? Our recent form on intermediates and downforce tracks hasn't been that great. So I'd say, um, you know, it's going to be a struggle at Michigan. But uh, Bristol certainly is on the radar as well. We finished top five there and Eric came very close to winning it. So I think that's another good track for us. Final question. Stan, raise your hand. Hi, Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Marcus. Can you compare the challenges of this year to any other year in your racing career? Uh, it's been a struggle, and the last couple of years have been like that. You know, uh, first two years before they switched over this new body, uh, we had really good speed every, every week, and it was a lot of fun. The, the last couple of years have been a challenge for us. Uh, so it's, it's been a grind, no doubt, and uh, we're looking for that, that next step in our team. Uh, it's, it's a big step for us to make the chase with Eric, that was a great day and, uh, and a great opportunity, but you know, we, we need more than that. You know, we, need, um, we need to fix our intermediate program, our downforce program, find out where, where we're lacking, and, um, and that'll, that'll make it a lot easier because that's the, the lion's share of, of the racetracks we go to, our, our downforce and handling racetracks. Uh, they're never easy. None of them are. So, uh, you know, even when you're winning championships, you think that you're struggling. That's just how racing works. But, uh, you know, I'm driving for the King and, uh, and we've been driving for Ford. It's just um, it's great to be part of the series. And just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not great. Marcos, thanks for uh, visiting with us and good luck this weekend.